Hi, we're back once again with the advent calendar project. Last time you saw me soldering up all of the components. Since then, I've written all of the firmware, so we've now got it running on the board. And the idea is that there's going to be this switch mounted to it, and every time you press it, it advances the day by one. And every time you press the button, it stores which day it is in the non-volatile memory, so that if you do turn it off, when you turn it back on the next day, it stays on the correct date. So you can keep pressing that and it advances. Once it gets to 24, it will go back to 1. And I've had another PCB made. Uh, so this has the numbers on it and I'll uh, zoom you in a little bit. So I've had this PCB made at JLC PCB and you can just about see what's going on. So we've got the solder mask and the copper filling the entire board except for where the numbers are. And then I've taken away the solder mask very slightly to give it that silver edge around the numbers. And then when these are illuminated by an LED, you can see it quite nicely lights up each of the numbers. On the back side, we've got basically the same thing. So basically the LEDs are just shining through the FR4 material to illuminate the numbers. And the idea is that this is going to be soldered to this front strip here. And so it'd be mounted at the front of the board like that and illuminated by each of the LEDs. Then to stop the light bleed from each of those LEDs, we've got these tiny little boards that I've had made up and these are going to be soldered onto those partitions and then we're going to have one more board at the back just to stop the light shining out the back of the unit and then there's going to be a 3D printed thing just to sit on the top to create a little box for the days of advent. So that's the front section of the PCB and then what I've done for the back is I've created a decorative scene with a little village that's going to go behind it so you can see we've got these houses um, where the light can shine through basically the windows. That's going to be mounted at this point here and similarly another board at the back and that will support a 3D printed roof that we're going to make to sit on the top of this village. And these LEDs inside here uh, randomly fade up and down to make it look like uh, people are turning their lights on and off inside the village. Uh, and we've got these LEDs at the front here which are PWM'd, they're interfering with the camera slightly but they just illuminate the front of the houses slightly uh, so that you can see what's going on at night. So what I want to do today is to solder up all of these parts onto the board and then the next video will 3D print the uh, various parts that we need to and just finish off the scene. So let's take a look at the design in Altium and this is designed to be very straightforward. I really didn't want anything too complicated on the PCB so a lot of the design decisions here are based on trying to make things simple. So first of all, power coming in, five volts direct from a USB power supply or something like that, through a Schottky diode for reverse polarity protection, and then just into a pair of large electrolytic capacitors. Underneath that, we've got the microcontroller. It's a DSPIC30F. Uh, many of you will be wondering why on earth I've picked this particular one. First of all, I had quite a lot of code that I'd written previously for these devices, so getting up and running with the firmware uh, was nice and quick. Also, I didn't want to have extra parts on the board, so I didn't want to have a 3.3 volt regulator, so I needed a part that was suitable for running on 5 volts, and I just happened to have a whole bunch of these parts available in the parts drawer, so that's the reason why I picked that part. It's really not doing a great deal, although I am PWMing these LEDs, so it is quite an advantage to have something that has a fair amount of processing power. It's uh, definitely overkill, we're not using the DSP processing part of this chip, uh, but it's relatively fast clock speed uh, means that we can get fairly decent resolution across all of those LEDs. Then a bit further down we've got the in-circuit serial programming connector and the interface to that switch with a little bit of debounce circuitry here. And then the rest of the design is really just these shift registers and these mid-power LEDs. So what we're using here is these Texas Instruments TPIC 6C596 shift registers with high current output. So these are open collector outputs but they have a higher current capability than the standard 74HC595 and these LEDs are designed to be run somewhere around 50 or 60 milliamps and then with the PWM capability we're able to dim those right down. So these are those shift registers very similar to the 74HC595 but instead as I said we've got these open collector outputs. Output current up to 250 milliamps and if we scroll down Here's the internal diagram so you can see we've got that very similar structure even with the registers at the output so you can shift data in quite slowly and then just shift all the data to the LED straight away but you can see they've got these 
uh, open collector transistors on the right hand side which have that higher current capability so that just saves having to have an additional set of output transistors on the PCB. The LEDs themselves are from LCSC, a fairly generic 3.5 by 2.8 millimetre LED. These are extremely warm white, 2700 Kelvin, which is ideal for this particular scene. And they're designed to run anywhere up to 150 milliamps, giving about 60 or 70 lumens. So ideal for this. Also, they're extremely cheap. I only needed 48 for this PCB. For 60 of them, it only cost $1.92. The actual drawing work was done in Adobe Illustrator and then imported in separate layers into Altium as DXF files and basically we're only using a couple of layers here so we're using the copper layer and then the solder mask. Uh, we haven't actually got any silk screen printed on this PCB and that gives us the effect uh, that we're after. We had all of the PCBs made at JLC PCB and they were significantly cheaper than any of the other suppliers because they're quite large boards 500 millimeters long that really commands quite a premium from a lot of the other suppliers, so there was a real cost advantage to buying these from JLC PCB. And generally speaking, the quality has come out absolutely perfect. So what we're going to do now is try to assemble up these PCBs. So you can see we've got these tinned copper strips along the edges here, and that's what we're going to use to hold the two PCBs together. So basically I'm just going to run a bead of solder along this line. Now I might have to do this off camera because I need about four pairs of hands to get the first bit of PCB in place so it's all nicely aligned. So that's the front part soldered in place. Uh, so there's a little bit of solder behind each of the numbers. Next thing is to put all of these little dividers there to stop the light bleeding through. So I'll press this right up against the front and just solder each of those in place. So that's all of those dividers soldered into place and that should really help with stopping the light bleeding to the adjacent numbers. The next thing to do is to mount another one of these strips on the back here and that will just stop the light shining out of the back. So that all soldered up quite nicely. I started in the middle because there is a little bit of warpage on these PCBs at the front just because of the aspect ratio. JLC PCB recommend about a 10 to 1 aspect ratio at the very most. This is considerably worse than that so there is a little bit of warpage. Starting in the middle means that that provided the most amount of pressure at the right point and then I worked my way out so that it all lined up properly. But you can see that is working really quite effectively at preventing too much of the light bleed into adjacent numbers. And you can see there the number 18 illuminated quite nicely. So that's working well. Next, we're going to solder the houses into place. So again, there's a little strip along the bottom and some solder points along the PCB. And I do also have some dividers, though I'm not too concerned about the light bleed here. These ones are a little bit different. They've got a little bit cut away so that you can mount over the ICs here. So I've tacked that in in a couple of places, but as you can see, we've had a slight cock up. Some of these dividers end up exactly in line with these windows. So I must have miscounted how many houses we had along here. I do want to keep some of these in place because what they do is help keep this absolutely vertical. So some of them do happen to line up perfectly. You can see this one's fine. One here would be just fine as well. Uh, I'm going to have to remove this one. Um, and one just over here would be okay just there. So I'm probably going to remove the others 
and then just put some in there just to keep everything vertical. And then we have some slightly different ones just to fit at the edge that go up to the full height of the house up here. So I've taken out the offending dividers and now I think we're ready to solder everything else in place. So that's all gone together quite nicely. I ended up using the Ursa icon to solder everything today uh, because it's got quite a small compact handpiece. It means I was able to get in quite easily into all of the tight spaces. So that worked quite nicely here. Um, obviously a sh slight shame about the dividers but I'm not too concerned about the light bleed from one house to the next. These all fade up and down anyway uh, so it's no real great loss. Uh, obviously uh, the lights here, you can't see that flicker in real life. I'll probably just take a photo and then you can see what it actually looks like because the effect is really quite nice. And then the final thing to do, which we'll do in the next video, is 3D print a roof to go over the top of this and also to go along here and that will finish off the project quite nicely. But I think that's come together quite nicely. Uh, PCBs, absolutely great quality from JLC PCBs, so don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some boards made. If you've got any thoughts or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are really helping keeping the channel going. And until next time, thanks for watching.